Didn't see you there. Hello, my name is Tim Clancy. I'm a sophomore at the University of Pennsylvania, and today I'm going to show you an Oculus Rift application that I've developed. To start, we're going to go back to Java. This is a web spider that I've written in Java. It's in a GitHub repository of mine. The code is all going to be attached in the description of this video. I'm just going to very briefly touch on it now. I'm using the JDBC drivers to interact with a WAMP stack that I have running on my local computer here. And this class is just a utility class that allows me to execute queries on that database. Here's the actual web spider. Uh, and uh, very quickly here, what it does is it clears out the database, picks a seed URL, in this case I'm using my own URL, rockopera.us, and it begins processing web pages in the breadth first search. Now it's also got some sanitation methods here, and a depth first search operation here. I'm not going to be touching on that one. Again, the code is all on my GitHub repository if you'd like a more detailed look. What I found for this application is that a depth first search really doesn't provide me the results I want. So I'm going to be using a breadth first search and you'll find out why in a moment. Now here's the breadth first search. It's very, very standard. I sanitize my URLs, I store them in a database, and I make sure that there's no overlap or self loops while I'm exploring the internet. So without further ado, we're going to launch the spider here. And you see it begins printing out the web pages in the order that it visits them. If we look on the WAP stack end, we can see what it's really doing here. We go to the record table. And what it does is it assigns a unique integer ID to every unique URL it finds and stores them in this table. So we can see record one, rockopera.us, two, three, so on. Every URL has its own unique integer identifier. And in the edges table here, what we're storing are tuples of integers where every integer will point to a unique URL. And with this, we can really reconstruct the graph that is the internet. If I position node 1 here, node 2 here, I know there's an edge, I can begin building a visualization. And this is exactly what I've done in the Unreal Engine. Now, before I could bring all of this data into the Unreal Engine, what we need to do is implement a RESTful API on top of the WAMP stack. Now, I use the very helpful ArrestDB code. This is acknowledged and credited on my GitHub page if you want to take a look at it yourself. But what this allows us to do is basically visit this web page here, and receive a nice formatted JSON string that represents the state of the database at this time. So here's a list of all the edges, and I'm going to be using this in the Unreal Engine. Now if we open up the Unreal Engine, here is some Unreal Engine blueprinting script. Uh, this is a little hard to share the code for, but if you look on my web repository, again the uh, link to that will be in the video description, I have some paste bins that you can import in Unreal Engine if you want to explore around with this yourself. But this is the level blueprint for my Unreal Engine map. And basically what we have here at the bottom is a large block of code that will parse that unique JSON string and add those tuples of integer IDs to an edge array. And up here is the next major bit, where we have a trigger box, where when the player enters this box, it runs a function, function make star. Let's go look at make star. What we're doing here is we're reading from the edge array. And in this piece of code here is really assigning materials to points, translating points based on the previous points, and drawing lines between the points. The end result of this is a visualization of the internet. Or at least the internet in the immediate vicinity of rockopera.us. So without further ado, I'm going to put on the rift and I'll give you guys a look at what this uh, application does. We got our rift, we got our controller, and we're ready to explore. Now, if we look around here, you can see that the uh, base application itself is a inky blackness with a golden staircase leading up to a green glowing sphere. Now that sphere represents rockopera.us. That is the seed URL that we fed to our spider. And when I get close to that, I'm gonna hit the trigger and begin the make star routine. And there we go. Now what these are all, this is, um. These nodes are pulling my database in real time and drawing them as the spider explores things. Every node represents one URL and the lines between them are links from one URL to another. Now the real web is much denser than this. What I've done in the spider is I've limited it to just select 10 random URLs per page so we can really get a nice branching effect with minimal web crawling for this demo, but you can very easily implement this to crawl everything and then you'd have a completely accurate map. Now the colors are also important. You can see green is obviously where we started, but blue, blue nodes, those are the ones that the spider discovered you know, earlier on in the process, whereas these pink ones 
are, you know, progressively lighter and eventually they'll turn red. And that's very late in the process of the spider's discovery. They become redder and redder just as a kind of a easy way of visualizing the fact that it discovers the stuff closer to the center first. And so we can hop back a bit and you can really take a look at just this whole structure that we've discovered so far. And it uh, really gives you a sense of appreciation for the size of the internet. And it's uh, definitely very awe-inspiring to look at in virtual reality. So, that's all I have to share today. Uh, thank you for watching my video, and remember check out my code repositories, github.com slash timtinkers, rockhopper.us for my website, and uh, thank you for watching my video.